Hello, Maximo. It looks like <laughs> it's going to be just the two of us once again, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that the other ones are going to connect through throughout the session or probably in some minutes or something like that. So how are you doing today, Maximo? I was fine. Okay, very good. So, um, well, hopefully the other ones are going to connect in some minutes. If they don't connect, well, we will still have to continue with the class, okay? So, um, let me see. But can you hear me clearly? Like, no interference is clear, everything? Like, uh, a little you know, interference. There's interference. A little. Probably it's because it's raining outside and... Uh, you know, when it rains, like the internet doesn't work that well. And some of the companies that we have in El Salvador sometimes do not help us to, to have a good internet connection. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for you guys. Always, you're always on time, Maximo and Rosemary. I can see that you're always on time. So thank you very much for that. Good evening. So, um, well, uh, as usual, before we start the class, I will always ask you some questions regarding to the last topic that we saw. So, um, let me see. What was yesterday's class about? Do you guys remember what was yesterday's class about? About pronunciation. It was a little bit of pronunciation, of course. And uh, today we are going to see, um, well, uh, it was for the irregular, for the irregular verbs, okay? And uh, we saw a lot of things about irregular verbs. And today I'm just going to ask you some questions regarding to that. And then we are going to move on to today's class. Okay, today's class is going to be also a little bit of grammar, a lot of things that you have probably seen or that you know already, uh, but it's just a matter of trying to verify if you remember those things, because sometimes uh, we don't remember some basic things, which makes more difficult for us to like, I mean, to understand some things while when we read or when we do something. something. So yesterday, uh, we saw some rules about irregular verbs. Well, not specifically rules, uh, but they were categories. So there, they were three categories that we actually saw. So can you mention to me at least one of those categories that we saw? About irregular verb? Yeah, about irregular verbs. Some verb change the vowel. Some verbs. Present and past. Yeah, that's that's one of the of the categories. That some verbs, the only thing that they do is just to change one letter from present to past. Which other category do we have? Do we have any other than the one that Maximo already mentioned? Guys, what about the other ones? It's not only Maximo here. There's a lot of people here already. What about the other ones? Well, looks like you don't remember, do you? Um, but we change complete. That though some of them change completely. Okay, thank you very much for that. That's another category. That some of the verbs are completely different in present. And when we change that to the past form, it changes drastically and completely. It's something different. Um, 
We also saw, guys, some verbs that never, I mean, they change. change. They don't change. So can you tell me like one or two examples of those verbs that never change? Good. He uh, cut, cut. Cut. Uh -huh. He pressed. Yeah, we have that one. Which other one can you mention to me? Eat. Hit. I'm sorry, what? Hit. Hit, yes. Is the verb read? Does the verb read changes? Does it change? No. No. Does only the only only the sound. The sound or the pronunciation in past. What's the pronunciation in past of the verb read? Red. Red. Red as the color. Yeah, that's perfect. So, um, well, uh, yesterday we had a lot of verbs, a variety of verbs. And uh, the practice that we did, guys, the pictures that you sent through the WhatsApp group, some of you wrote the letter, uh, the number eight, I saw. And I never mentioned the number eight. I said the verb eight. So I was checking some of them and I saw that some of you wrote number eight, but that was not a verb. That was just a number. So I never mentioned the verb and no, a number eight. So when I was, or well, what I was trying to tell you, or what I was trying to say, it was the verb eight in past, like that. Eight. What is the present form of that verb? Eat. Eat. Y algunos de ustedes me, me escribieron el, el número ocho, so I don't understand. So probably you didn't understand, but that's that's fine. I mean, that's fine. We, we are here to learn and I mean, that's completely understandable. Today, we're going to have also one practice at the end, but today is not going to be about verbs. Today is gonna be like dictation. Have you ever had some like that in the past? No? Well, it's, it's kind of, it's caught enough, right? Is, is it only me or, or when I'm speaking, it's like cutting off? You know what I mean? No? no. He's not? No, okay, good. All right. So, um, well, today we're going to move on to today's topic because the time is running. So uh, if we continue just speaking, 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 we are going to never finish that. All right. So uh, today, guys, is going to be focused on there is, there are, some, and any. I'm pretty sure that you all remember a little bit about it. So uh, we're just going to go directly one by one because I'm pretty sure that you all know a little bit about it. So let me ask you a question before we start. What does there is and there are mean? Or what, what do they mean? That's my question. Do you know what do they mean? Existencia. Uh, yeah, that's something something exists. Okay. What's the use that we do or how do I use there is? In singular. 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 Okay. Oh. And there are obviously I'm gonna use it for plural. That's that's obvious. Okay. So uh today we're going to have a reminder, reminder about those topics. So here we have singular and plural. So Rosemary, help me reading this part and Maximo, if you don't mind, help me reading this example. 
So let's start with Rosemary, please. Uh, your microphone is off. Sorry. There is a cell phone on the table. Thanks so much. Maximo, please. There are apples on the table. Thank you very much. So we're just going to move on very quick to the next things uh, because you already know this information. So Sonia, I'm going to ask you to keep reading this part right here. The expression, expression there is, there are, are used to indicate that something exists or is in a certain location. Mm -hmm. Okay, as it says there, those are expressions that are going to help us to understand that something exists or it is located in a certain location. Uh, so, um, I mean, those are the things that you know about there is and there are. First of all, we're going to go with there is and we're just going to have a brief review, review, as I told you at the beginning, it's just a brief review because you already know how to do that or how to form affirmative or how to form negative sentences or even interrogative or questions in there is and there are. So we're not going to have that much. Or we're not going to focus too much on that. So um, let me see, Bilma. Would you mind helping me read in the affirmative form? Yes, teacher. There is a computer on the desk. Okay, so as you can see, when we have the affirmative form, we have there is, when it's singular, we can use the letter A or, or the letter A-N to refer to something, uh, I mean, singular. So there is a computer on the desk. So let me see negative form, Damaris Vega. Would you like helping me with that? Damaris, are you there? Yes, teacher. Uh, can you repeat me, please? I don't understand. Oh, okay. So I just want you to help me reading the negative form. Okay, negative four. And there is not a pile on the bed. Okay, okay. So there is not a pillow on the bed. Okay, Claudia, tell me reading the interrogative form. Um, is there a part? Is there a part there? Is there a part there? Thank you very much. Okay. So here, as you can see, the difference between affirmative and negative is obviously just the word not. And for the interrogative form, the only thing that we do is just to move the verb at the beginning, then the word there, and then everything remains the same time or the same location. Everything stays in the same location or the same part in the sentence. Now, let me try to verify if you remember about there is and there are. I will write a sentence on the chat and I will need you to change that sentence into a question. Okay, let me see, I will write two actually. Um, okay, this is the first one. And this is the second one. So you will decide either the number one or the number two. What I want you to do is to change either one of them into a question, obviously, the one that you will choose. If you want to use number one, use number one. If you want to use number two, use number two, okay? So let's go. 
What you have to do is just to make it a question. That's it, very simple. Okay, Bilma, thank you very much. Hmm. Fatima, okay. Damaris, I can see yours too. Claudia, the one that you wrote is an ex, that's a sentence actually. And what I was saying is that from the two sentences that I gave you, I need you to change either one of them into a question. Okay. So Patricia, I can see Patricia. Oh, she wrote both actually. Oh, okay. Rosemary. Um, there's is there an orange in the refrigerator? Okay, good. I see that some of you wrote different examples. But I mean, that's fine. Are there, two, are there two apples in the fridge? Okay. So I think that we have, uh, we don't have too many issues or there's, uh, I mean, you have already the knowledge about there is. So we are going to just to move on. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Sonia, I can see yours here, Claudia too. Is there, is there, is there my coat in the bed? Okay, that's fine. All right. So now we're going to move on to the part of there are. And let me see, Sonia, I would like to help me with the positive or affirmative form. Uh, Claudia, I will have, I would like, I will ask you to help me with the negative form. And Rosemary, I will ask you to help me with the interrogative form. So guys, please go ahead. There are three chairs in the classroom. Mm -hmm. There are three chairs. We say chairs. chairs, we don't say chairs, okay? Chairs. chairs, okay. Perfect. Negative form? The negative form, Claudia? Um. Tengo que hacer rayo, ¿verdad? No tiene que ir con, relacionada no. con la primera. No, no, no. The negative form. I just want you to read. To help me read ah. it, this part. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, there, there are no oranges in the fridge. There are no oranges in the fridge. Okay. In the, fridge. the interrogative form. Are, are there two smartphones? Are there two smartphones? Remember intonation of the questions, please. So, um, we are not going to make uh, examples of that because I'm pretty sure that you already know how to do so. So we're just going to keep moving on uh, so we can check the other things that we have to check, okay? So uh, as you already know, there is, we can make contractions, we can contract there with the verb to be, and we can say there's, or we can contract the is with the negative not, but that's just for the negatives. We can say there's, or we can say there isn't, either one of them. There's is going to be just for the affirmative, and there isn't is going to be for the negatives. Something very important that you need to remember is that there are, we cannot contract it. Why we cannot? Because it will be, uh, in speaking, it will be weird. If you, if you say something like there, that sounds weird. So 
That's why, that's the reason why in phonetic is not, is not used in that way. So there are, we cannot make a contraction. We cannot say there, that will be incorrect. Only the contraction that we can do is that when we talk in the negative form and we say, how do we say the negative form contracted? Does anyone know? There aren't. There aren't, like that. So that's the way we say it. That's the only way that we can contract. It's, it's between the verb be and the word not, that we can say there aren't. But other than that, we cannot make the contraction. So let's move on. Here we have like a, like a brief detailed information, some other examples that we can have. So we're just going to read them. Let me see, Maximo, help me reading the part that is in, uh, in, in green. Let me see. Uh, Nancy Maldonado, I will ask you to help me read in the part that is in yellow. And uh, Fatima Guardado, I will ask you to help me read in the part that is in red, this part right here. And the one, the person that has the part in yellow will have to also read this small part in green and this small part in red. So let's go. There's a computer. There's an exercise bike. Mm -hmm. There are some DVDs. Thank you very much. <coughs> Let's go with a person with the jello. There are telescopes. Are I'm, so there I'm sorry, say that again. Is there a telescope? Are there okay. Are there any bedrooms? Okay, now read the read the short answers. Yes, there yes. is. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are. Okay, what about the negatives? No, there is them. No, mm -hmm. there are. Okay, so as you guys already know, or as you already remember, or I mean, because this information, you already know it. It's just a brief information or like um, we're trying to study things that you already saw, which is checking, just verifying that you didn't forget about it, okay? So as you know, this, type of answers are short answers. What if I want to, or what if I ask you to give me a complete answer? If I ask you the question, is there a telescope? How would you give me a complete answer to that question? Yes, there, yes is. there is a telescope. Exact. That's the complete answer. Yes, there is a telescope. That's a complete answer because these ones right here, yes, there is, that's a short answer. So we have to know or we have to remember the difference between a complete and a short answer. Because sometimes in an exam or in an evaluation, one teacher can ask you, give me complete answer. And because sometimes you don't read instructions, you are going to just write, yes, there is. And that will be incorrect. Why? Even though it is correct. But if someone asks you for something complete, you will have to know how to give a complete answer and how to give a short answer, okay? So um, who got the part in red? Me, uh, it's, there isn't a TV. Mm -hmm. there, aren't an, there aren't any beds. Thank you very much. Now, 
this is the whole thing, the whole thing that we just saw. It's very detailed information, a specific information of how to understand affirmatives, negatives, and questions. But this is pretty much everything that I just told you uh, previously, okay? So we are not going to focus that much on this. We are just going to read the examples and move it, move on. So uh, this example right here, I will need Claudia. This example right here, Nancy. This example, the third one here, Rosemary. The next one, Sonia. The following one, Fatima Guardado. This one right here, Maximo. The questions right here, the Maris will have the one with their is, and Carlos Antonio, you will have this one with their are. Patricia um, Rodriguez, you will have this question right here, and Cecilia Rivas, you will have this question right here. Let me see who else. Arnoldo Castellon, you will have all the contractions, okay? So let's go. There is a book on the desk. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't listen to you. Can you say that again? There are books on the desk. Thank you very much. Who got the, the next one? There is some milk in the fridge. In the fridge. Okay. Thank you very much. Who got the next one? There isn't a pen on the table. Thank you very much. Next one. There aren't any pens here. Excellent. The last one here. There, there isn't. isn't any juice in the fridge. Oh, so Maximo, you will read the, the question then. Is there a cut on the chair? Okay. Who got this question right here? Are there cut on the sofa? Are there, we say, are there cuts on the sofa? Are there on the sofa? Sofa. Yeah, even though, even though we write it as like in Spanish. In Spanish, we write it sofa like that, something like that. But in English, we just make a little bit difference in pronunciation. We just say sofa instead of saying sofa like in Spanish. Okay? Okay. Remember. Okay. So who has this uh, question right here? How many students are there in your class? Okay. Um, remember that the WH question is no how, it's how, how many, okay? But thank you very much. Who got this question right here? How many days are there in February? Excellent. And who got the contractions? Okay. Contraction. There is. There is. There uh, is not. Mm -hmm. There is not. There isn't. There is not. There aren't. There are not. The first two when you when you when you said the first two they didn't sound as contraction because this one you have to say it there's there oh. there's not there's is not there's not mm -hmm. okay so that's why they okay. didn't sound as, as contraction but thank you so much so um Thanks. i'm guessing that you all already know this information but in case someone doesn't remember something or something uh, that we just saw is not clear, please let me know right now. Is there any question, guys? 
No questions. All right. So now we're going to go to the next part, which is some and any. How do we use some and any? We are going to understand today. Okay. So uh, let me see. Let me see. I will ask someone else. Alba Marisol, help me reading this part here and this part right here. So it can be used in sentence. We we can barely hear you. It's like we hear you like you're so far away, like far, far away. No, I'm um I think she's 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 having some situations there. So Maxima, I'm sorry that I asked you so much to read, but can you please help me? The first one. Yeah, this part here and this one right here. Ah, okay. Some is generally used. No, no, I mean this first, this one, and then this one. Uh, we use some and any with plural nouns and uncountable nouns. Mm -hmm. Some is generally used in positive sentences. Very good. Let me see. Bilma, would you like to help me reading this? Okay. Any is generally used in negative sentence. Okay, so um, I'm pretty sure that in previous modules, you already saw information about some um, any. So today is just a refreshment for you to remember those things that probably you already forget. You already forgot in this case. So uh, some, we are always, always going to use it when we have positive sentences. Any, we are going to always use it when we have negative sentences and questions. We are going to see that later on. So uh, let me see, Rosemary. Would you help me reading this first example? Rosemary is not there. An example. Yeah, this one here. This one. Please. Yeah, just read it. Just, just read. I have some information. Uh -huh. you about. Eh, no sé cómo se pronuncia la siguiente palabra. How do does anyone know how we pronounce this word, guys? Flight. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, you about flight. To parties. Mm -hmm. Okay, as you can see there, we are using an uncountable noun because when we know that information, information. Is countable noun. So everyone knows that already. As you can see, we're using some because the sentence is positive. So we have a positive sentence. So we say, I have some information for you about flies to Paris. Sonia, tell me with number two. I don't have any information for you about flings to Paris. Nice. Pardon, <laughs> flights to Paris. Okay, Negative now. Negative uncountable. Okay, as you can see, the sentence is already in negative. And as the information says right here, we use any when we have a negative sentence and the uncountable noun is always or still information. So we say, I don't have any information. I will never 
ever say something like, I don't have some information. That's not possible. So we say, I don't have any information for you about flights to Paris. Uh, let me see, uh, Carlos Antonio, one more time, help me with this part. We meet some in print for drying after work yesterday. Okay. Does anyone remember how do we, or does anyone know how do we pronounce this verb right here? Met. Met. Is it regular or irregular? Irregular. 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 Okay. So we say we met some friends for drinks after work yesterday. As you can see, the countable plural noun here is the word friends. And as we remember in the instructions here, it was saying that we use some with positives. So Vilma, help me with the next one. I didn't see any friends there on Thursday. I didn't see any friends there on Thursday. Negative, plural, countable noun. Elizabeth. This one, please. Elizabeth, are you there? So, sorry, did you uh, repeat, please? Can you just help me reading? Uh, and the point? Yeah. Here. I think I think he will have some time to speak to you today. Positive, uncountable. What is the uncountable now? Time, okay? And we still have something positive. That's the reason why we're still using some. Arnoldo, the last one. Okay. I don't think he will have any time to speak to you today. Perfect. So uh, with this information that we have right here, guys, any question that you might have? Okay, that was a, a no question. All right, so here we have uh, some other examples about there is and there are using some. As you can see, we can still use both there. I can use uh, there is with using because it's negative, or I could say there is some milk. I could say that too. So we can use there is and there are, including some and any. So that's pretty much the information that I need you to remember. I could say something like there isn't any milk, or it will be correct. This is a question for you all. Would it be correct if I say there is some milk in the refrigerator? No. Why not? Because the sentence is in negative. <laughs> because the sentence is in negative. Does anyone else was going to say something? Alguien más iba a decir algo? I heard two voices, but I, I didn't know who. Yes, because it's an uncountable. It's an uncountable too. Okay, that's perfect. So now, in the next part, I need you to pay attention in this because this are um, example. Uh, let me see. Let me see. No, it's not. No, this is not. Okay, this one. This is the one that I want you to pay attention to. These are exceptions. Exceptions that are always going to be like that. And we call them exceptions because in all the languages, there's always one or two exceptions that we have to pay attention to. As I previously told you, 
We use some for questions and affirmative sentences, correct? Is that, is that what I said? No, guys, that is not. I use some only for affirmative or positive sentences, but I never use some for questions. What do I use for questions? Any. Any, okay? So the exception is the following one. Only when we offer or when we request something, we will use as exception the word some, even though some is only used for affirmative sentences. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Well, it looks like no, right? Parece que no me están entendiendo. No. Claro, como el otro chimato. No, sinceramente no. So why do you never say something when I ask you? It's clear. It's like todo en silencio. So I'm assuming that when you just say nothing, it's because you understood. Okay, but let me try to explain this. Si sabemos que son lo utilizamos para affirmative sentences. Sí? sí. Solo para affirmative sentences. Entonces, la excepción es que cuando yo hago preguntas para ofrecer y para solicitar, exceptuamos esas dos preguntas y utilizamos son. En realidad, para preguntas, yo ya sé que tendría que estar utilizando cuál. Any. Any. Pero en este caso, como es una excepción, yo voy a utilizar son solo en esas dos situaciones. Offer and request. That's why we call it exception. Por eso le llamamos exception, excepción. Someone asks you, or when you are going to ask a question like, would you like some bread? ¿Qué estoy diciendo? ¿Te gustaría un poco de pan? Estoy ofreciendo. Offer. So that's why when I offer something, I will use some as exception. Another question. Otra pregunta. Could I have some water? Yo le estoy solicitando a alguien. Le estoy, le estoy diciendo a alguien. Supongamos estoy en su casa y le digo, could I have some water? ¿Me podría, podría darme agua? Le estoy solicitando a usted que me dé agua. ¿Sí? En esos dos casos, en esas dos situaciones, solamente ahí yo voy a utilizar son. En otras preguntas, yo voy a utilizar cuál? Any. Any. That's it. Now, les dije que para negativas yes. o utilizábamos cuál? Any. Crips? Any. 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 Pero en este caso, esta oración que yo tengo acá, ¿se ve negativa? No. Yep. All right, porque si yo digo, I refuse to give him any money. Yo no veo ahí ningún auxiliar que me esté diciendo, oh, it's negative. No. Pero hay un truco. Porque el sentido de la oración sí es negativo. Entonces, por esa razón, yo voy a utilizar any y no son. Yo no tenga ningún auxiliar ahí que me diga que esté en negativo. ¿Cómo es eso posible? How is that possible? 
the sentence says, I refused to give him any money. What do you guys understand when you listen to the word I refuse to give him? Teacher, what is, what is the meaning refuse? Refuse. That's what I was going to ask you. Does any Yes, but I uh -huh. go ahead. I'm but sorry. this word I understand. Es un rechazo. Uh -huh. Automáticamente es algo negativo. Es como que yo diga, me rehuso. I refuse. Me, eh, me rehusé, en este caso, I refused because it is in past. I refused to give him, me rehusé a darle, ¿qué? Dinero. Si bien la oración no tiene nada negativo, vuelvo y repito, no tiene ningún auxiliar que me diga que está negativo, pero el sentido de la oración cuando yo digo, me rehuso a darle, es completamente negativo. No sé si me entiende. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. So, es, that's why it says, es como que yo estuviera diciendo, I didn't give him any money. Es lo mismo, son equivalentes. Solamente que en ese caso el verbo rehuse o refuse, re, it's like dándote un sentido negativo, negative sense. So that's the reason why automatically we make the exception and we change some for any. Is it clear? All right. Hope it's yes. clear. Because now we're going to have uh, we're going to have the practice. Okay. So if anyone, si alguien tiene una pregunta que hable ahora o calle para siempre. Ya nos quedamos callados. <laughs> that was, that was funny. <laughs> no questions at all? Toda la vida tendré preguntas. Ask the questions or doubts or Preguntas, dudas, comentarios, arrepentimientos, todos son aceptados. <laughs> no? Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm guessing we're going to go directly to the practice. So please, you know what to do. Take a screenshot of your uh, cell phone, of your, I don't know, computer, or whatever device you're using. Uh, so we can move to number two. Can I move now? Here we are. And this is uh, just a conversation that we are going to practice. So you will decide whether to do the conversation first and then go to the exercises or doing the exercises first and then going to the conversation. That will be up to you, okay? Can I move to the next one? This is another conversation actually. Yes. Okay, so I think that you all got it right now. So I will stop sharing. And we're going to go directly to the breakout room. So let me see. I need you guys that you guys go to your groups. I already sent you the invitations. I will be checking all of you. Please try to speak English.
Nancy, are you having any situation? Pero dice que la calle. Walk around the stress of your city. It is, uh, there, there are two things. Sí, algunos, algunos, ay, no sé qué es eso. Um, his house. Esa es una, una cantidad. 
una gran cantidad de basura en su casa. Miles. Es... Miles. Sí, Are miles. Uh -huh. awesome. there, are, there are miles de botellas. There are. Uh -huh. Ok. En uh -huh. uh, There is also um, 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 also an, 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 uh -huh. armchair, armchair, and um, some curtains, some curtains, uh -huh. um, in front of the window, there uh -huh. aren't uh, paintings, there aren't any. R-O-N-G Vamos a salir Mal, es mal Significa mal que está mal ah, Equivocada sí, tiene de, O que tiene de malo O que tiene de malo eso Ajá, ajá. ajá verdad eso es. Dice The some reason, reason Of the one to own Como que es en el es... sentido De Trump uh -huh, uh -huh. In, in fact, many, many things in our there house. Um, there aren't. Uh, aren't. There are but in Alfredo's house there are there aren't many new things. Everything No me di ni cuenta cuando lo sacó. Okay, so I was expecting to uh, to some of some of you to help me with at least with with two examples at least. Uh, I mean this one, because because of the time we we can just have uh, one or two participations. So I will ask for volunteer actually. So if anyone would like to help me with this one, which is the first one, and this one. Number two. No? There are. There are. In the first one? Mm. Are there? Is there? Um, there. That there one is, is, is there. There is there. Is there. What about there. number there. What about number, number two? two? There are. There are. There are. What about this one? There are. There are thousands of bottles in the house. Let me see the one that I was trying to, this one right here. There is. There is. 
Do you, the other ones, do you agree? There are. There, there are. are. It's yeah. actually there are because we're talking, even though it says all plastic CD boxes. Yes. Okay, so we're referring to the boxes. So do not focus on the. We're talking about the boxes. That's the reason why we use uh, there are. So um, that's going to be all for today, guys. Thank you so much for attending to the class today. See you on Monday. Remember that tomorrow we are going to be checking your progress on the platform, okay? So you have to have at least 80% so we can check and send that information um, to the persons in administration, okay? So hope you have, uh, have a good night and a good weekend. Take care of yourselves and see you on Monday, okay? Good night. Thank, Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Good night.